Recording is in progress. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. And I will um, need to get control so I can share my own screen. You may do so. Okay. Give me a second now. Uh, it is this one. So. Share. Okay, Maurice, your your show. Thank you so much, uh, Lloyd and team. I'm very glad to appear here. I've been very patient listening to everything that uh, everyone has said. And I think all our missions and aspirations and expectations and passions and compassions are just intertwined together. So um, I just want to share my main theme is indigenous ecosystem restoration. Having- uh, oh, Maurice, I apologize. Uh, Maurice, I apologize. Please introduce your name, your first, yourself first. Okay. Yourself, your name and yes. your organization, please. Thank you. Yes, I think the next slide will have everything, but uh, my name is Maurice Obuya. Okay. Yes, and um, I am a health practitioner, having done environmental health sciences and also done uh, strategic information uh, technology management in the University of Derby, UK, from uh, diploma to higher diploma and uh, masters. And uh, I've practiced as a health practitioner for 10 years with the Ministry of Health Kenya, and also as a strategic information technology um, specialist with USAID for another 10 years. And in 2018, I started my permaculture mission. And uh, after engaging in um, conventional agriculture. I met Bill Mollison in 2013 uh, online and I did uh, regenerative leadership. And I came to a conclusion that uh, everything about regenerative, regenerative leadership was uh, focused on restoring the lost indigenous ecosystems. I visited so many indigenous communities in Kenya and Uganda and uh, Tanzania, and I felt that all the permaculture principles are reflected in some of the systems that are currently existing now. So I mainly use uh, permaculture design, regenerative design principles to restore indigenous ecosystems. So I'm going to take you through my story, which is uh, focused on um, indigenous ecosystems restoration through advanced permaculture design courses academy. So um, I have a bioregional hub in Kisumu and uh, other diversified hotspots in Kindu Bay and uh, Kilifi and also Lamu, where I am privileged to own some uh, land properties in the four counties. So I'll take you through the projects in uh, Kindu Bay and also partly Kisumu and also what we entail when you talk about uh, advanced permaculture design course. Thank you so much. Next slide. Something slow here, hold on. Oh, there we go. I will not go text by text, but I'll just give, uh, because of time, I think I have about 10 minutes. So that is our headquarters of uh, our regional hubs. And we work so closely with young people, women, men, and also the elderly. But most of our staff are women. You can see them there in the picture, and that is our our, our, our billboard and also a banner. Next. That is Kisumu, Kajulu Hills. So um, that is part of it. Uh, you can see a lot of biodiversity there. So our main theme is biodiversity, increasing biodiversity and resiliency, and also integration, and also using natural uh, regenerative farming methods. Next. Yeah, so those are some of the units that we have. We have several units, about uh, 16 units, and each one of them is branded. And they, are, they all have integrated uh, 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 plants or biodiversified. And uh, we use the principles of uh, companionship and also integration and uh, trying to, um, it's called what? Uh, niche and space, trying to occupy the niche and space 
uh, underground and also above the ground. So we balance the routing systems and also the plant's functionalities so that we don't uh, plant plants that uh, are, comp are competing. So in uh, Kajulu Hills, we have around 30 acres and in Kindu Bay, we have another six acres. In Kilif, we just have a quarter and in Lamu, we have 60 acres. So in all these units, we are trying to bring out uh, ecosystems and they are in different agroecological zones in Kenya. Next. So we want to have, um, we want to transition from uh, um, uh, activism to practivism. So we aim at establishing demonstration plots, uh, which can uh, communicate to the other regenerative world so that they can change their investments from investing in monoculture to polyculture. So we start by promoting indigenous seeds, seedlings, tubers, vines, um, uh, banks, and uh, in different parts of Kenya. And uh, somebody has opened his uh, microphone. Okay. We also improve on existing, uh, establishing more about regional hubs um, and about diversified hotspots. And uh, also intend to improve our learning infrastructure because we train people from across Africa. And um, also uh, as we move forward, we're also trying to create strong accounting systems and provide free seeds and seedlings, vines, tubers to establish uh, 15 community biodiversity units. And uh, we, part we promote also active community participation in project design, planning, implementation, monitoring, and uh, disseminating organizational shared values with the staff, volunteers, and stakeholders. So our main shared values are just regenerative agriculture. Next. So, so far we have uh, uh, trained uh, around more than 100 refugees and 30 community members in basic uh, regenerative agriculture. And we had also run a regenerative radio program reaching out 230,000 refugees in Kakuma, Tukana. And uh, we have provided indigenous seeds exchange, reaching out to more than 450 refugee hold households through more than 30 uh, uh, organizations in Tukana and also in the community in Kenya, mostly in uh, Western Kenya and also Central Kenya and also Tukana. So uh, we are currently reaching out to our objective through running advanced permaculture design courses. And through this, uh, we aim at empowering people with the scientific skills of restoring indigenous ecosystems because uh, unfortunately, most of our indigenous knowledge was washed out and undocumented until Bill, Bill Mollison came up with the 18 permaculture principles and five ethics to restore indigenous ecosystems in a systematic and scientific way which uh, if anyone follows, uh, we can uh, avert climate change and improve food security. So, so far we have trained 10 refugees uh, from Tukana and more than 120 community members in advanced permaculture design course since 2018 when I started uh, the program. Next. So th th that is one of the zones next at Kajulu Hill Seco Villages. So, um, we have a lot of uh, activities going on at Kajulu Hill Seco Villages um, with the community members. And uh, we have uh, numerous uh, plants, including uh, primary plants, including uh, pineapples, pumpkins, lemongrass, uh, indigenous trees. Actually, we have managed to, in the 30 acres, we have managed to, to conserve more than almost a million indigenous trees and then we integrate them with other plants like uh, uh, pineapples, coconuts, uh, bananas, uh, cactus, uh, lemongrass, uh, mangoes, gua uh, guavas and uh, many other types of uh, plants. Next. So um, the main activities that we have is just maintenance as uh, we are trying to make our system zero weeding, zero chemical, 
um, zero molasticide, zero fungicide, yeah, and uh, zero chemical fertilizer uh, use, yeah. So, um, so currently we are doing some very very minimal uh, uh, control of uh, invasive species through weeding, and we keep on adding layers year by year. We started the project in 2015, but year by year we keep on adding more and more layers so that the system can be more stable and self-sustaining. Next. Yeah, that is uh, our team. Next. So uh, over, over the period that you have worked with the community members, we have seen several uh, community members working within the hubs. And then the diversity of crops and conserved trees and fruits are coming up in unison. And then we have branded all the units, uh, including community members. We have about eight units that we have given to community members, and they're also working on them. And then we are also working on a natural uh, stone house, which is at last stage of construction. And the moment you enter into a system, you will realize the very big difference uh, from the conventional monoculture system and polyculture system through ch instant change of temperature, green environment, and uh, with a lot of uh, beautiful plants. Some of them, I don't know them because I just conserved them because the, the ones which are not invasive. And many of them have uh, added and many of them have conserved. So we have a caretaker who makes sure that everything is put in order next. Yeah, so this one is a, is a visit from uh, another lady who was supporting us from uh, uh, UK, uh, Regenerative uh, Network. Uh, that is just part of our system. We are on top of uh, Kajulu Hills, opposite Nandi Hills, just above the Kisumu main Kisumu water point. So our place is actually one of the water towers, but unfortunately, apart from my farm, all the other surroundings are being cleared. All the indigenous trees are being cleared. So I really have a hectic work of trying to educate the community through demonstration. But I'm happy that a few neighbors are trying to endorse polyculture systems uh, uh, and I give them free seeds and seedlings and tubers. Thank you so much, next. So we just use normal communication methods directly face to face. And uh, we also sometimes communicate through uh, WhatsApp and uh, telephone phones and uh, telephones and SMS. Yeah, next. So uh, as I said earlier, every time we add different layers, you can see there's a mango there, there's a croton, there's a pineapple, there is um, lemongrass and also there is napier grass, next every time we add different methods. So we have observed se several changes. Environment has improved in all aspects, fresh air, coolness of the area, beauty of the environment has improved from a lot of life growth and conservation. Next. Uh, we have more women engaged in the hubs, um, owning pieces of land uh, on uh, user basis, not uh, in terms of legal basis, but they, you have given them some portions, all the staff as when we have resources they work in the system we don't have resources they work in their own farms and uh, improve life of these women as they get fresh foods then now they can produce their own fresh foods and we give them also we have opened for them an indigenous seeds bank we have given them indigenous seeds now they can grow as well as they as as well as they pay for their labor we pay for their labor in the hubs next so for men, we have young men working in the hub for pay at the construction site, as well as the farm, which earns them something. And we also have improved attitude towards generative agriculture. Some of the young people have already started establishing their small uh, indigenous ecosystems, which are integrated and resilient uh, without use of uh, uh, destructive chemicals. Next. Yeah, that is uh, part of a natural building. Uh, everything here is natural. We have integrated, uh, we have an octagonal house here. We integrate with the natural stones and we also use natural stones and we also use natural artisans, uh, local artisans to, to, to build the building. Next. Uh, 
I think uh, I've seen a very good response from the community, and I believe that with the enhanced effort to demonstrate that uh, natural systems can work, we can reach the other side of the world, which is the degenerative world, and we can have more investment coming towards regenerative uh, agriculture. Next. Yeah, so uh, we always have uh, a challenges or challenges in terms of getting continuous uh, minimal support because uh, our system is almost maturing and soon is going to be self-sustaining, but minimal support for maintenance and also support for the community. And also trying to extend networks for people to access regenerative education and also uh, support more seeds and seedlings uh, exchange programs because uh, currently in the actually in almost the whole world people are using gmo seeds which are degenerative they are uh, they are not self pollinating and even if you grow them again because they are genetically attenuated they cannot grow so i'm trying to mobilize uh, i've been trying to mobilize indigenous seeds from local farmers in kenya uganda and tanzania and then uh, if I get some small support, I take them to different communities across Kenya. Next, I have videos to that extent. Next. Yeah, that is part of our integrated system. Next. Yeah, so we also have, uh, we have brought in coconuts from uh, Kilifi. Right now, actually, I'm talking from Kilifi. And uh, they are doing well in Kisumu. That is our coconut nursery. And behind there, you can see our bamboo nursery. We had uh, bred more than 10,000 bamboos. We have already planted about 2,000 and about 200 coconut trees and about 500 banana trees within the system. And we also have another about 1,000 mango trees and oranges. And we have conserved thousands of uh, guavas and uh, other indigenous uh, fruits. Some of them, which I know how to eat well, but I don't know their names. So we are 100% uh, conservancy. Next. Yeah, yeah. So those are some of the our key uh, establishments. We are branding our units. Uh, we have now a clear name. We have increased uh, biodiversity. The system, I talked about 3,000 uh, pineapples, 200 bananas. We added that, gravelias, uh, trees. These are just did last year. 10,000 bamboos, coconut trees, thousands of lemongrass and nipia grass. Uh, sustainability and resiliency. Day after day, it keeps on increasing. And also community ownership process, uh, bearing in mind that communities have accepted to start practicing in their own land and you have given them some small pieces of land to start practicing. And then we always try to remove some invasive species, mostly one of the invasive species are the Tana Camaras. And um, we have maintained uh, a lot of trees, I think there are hundreds of thousands of them. Next. Yeah. So we uh, talked talk about the seed bank, yeah. And then we also conduct baseline surveys like uh, soil, moisture, pH, and biodiversity index tests in 10 different spots in the ecosystem. That makes it more scientific in terms of approach. And we keep on improving our financial system. And um, yeah, we mobilize most of the resources from the local community, like uh, farmers who are having uh, cattle, we get the manure from them. So we don't source a lot of things from outside next. Yeah, that's our team. Next, we also have young children participating and young people. So we have a, a business plan and it has three dimensions. We have the social regenerative entrepreneurship because we promote a transition from a regenerative passionpreneurship to regenerative ecopreneurship. So we have three dimensions, which is social regenerative entrepreneurship ensuring involvement of immediate families uh, that are living there so that they have their own product lines and then we also have communities, but ensure that the communities that are participating, they also have their own pro uh, product lines and also projects. So we don't want uh, the project to, to eat into the community and also the social entrepreneurship. So you want those three lines of entrepreneurship to be totally independent and uh, sustain themselves independently without interfering with one another. So through that, we create a lot of uh, resilience and uh, sustainability. Next. 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 Uh, just a few minutes to go. Yeah. Next. 
next next this is a community farm yeah so um we are currently promoting advanced generative culture through permaculture permanent agriculture or in short permaculture we are promoting safe farming methods including zero digging zero watering zero weeding zero chemicals zero pesticides zero herbicides zero molasses zero fungicides farming designs technologies principles and natural innovation it is good for our health environment and safest for the world and in term, also uh, good in terms of mitigating climate change so my contact is always there in all my adverts and that is my whatsapp contact and permanent contact next yeah so we are uh, having our eighth uh, all africa advanced permaculture train course from 10th to 20th july 2022 at kindu bay uh, city, uh and kisumu city that is the uh, along lake victoria beach yeah but those are in two counties in kenya and that is our link for our our, our facebook event right now we have more than 200 uh, people next almost done please next almost done now that is our poster of awareness creation talking about the benefits next next those are our facilitators first the facilitators on the on the left and guest speakers we have produced several uh, videos these are tutorials talking about the 18 principles of permaculture which are free of charge uh, for uh, education and awareness creation on my youtube channel and uh, they have reached out to quite a number of uh, thousands of people worldwide and people have been sharing them uh, in different forums next and then uh, for each of the things that we do we usually produce a video and uh, they have testimonies of those people who have attended and what they have learned so we are very very practical and we show people what we do all the time after each training we have a crew of video producers and artisans who help us in making the contact next so the best video that is trending most is the, the last one which is called the ecosystem eco secrets of the octagon which you produce in november so yeah we have um, an ongoing uh, fundraising for people who are willing to support us and we also have uh, um, we have uh, a tele a telegram group which is called telepama catch africa if you want to send our messages to many people to join the unity africa net um we can use oh, did we we got that near uh, just website dot org and also our own website kajulu hills echo villa we use very minimum resources uh to make uh, some impact or to demonstrate the world what we are doing so we have a free we use this week site website which is free of charge uh, that is where we have mounted our website and our activities and uh, that is it next i think that should be the end yes oh sorry just a very brief introduction to the ethics of bill mollison the the the, the founding ethics of permaculture next 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 just a few uh, one minute next next i just want to go to summarize this next because of time next 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 well we're not next. we're not rushing you so you next. can either take your time or not two two slides only i want to use here next but the others people can refer yeah this one yes this one so uh for a very long time and in most of the advanced uh, pdc courses people are training using 12 principles by which were summarized by David Holmgren, but we have original 18 principles which I use now. And when you read an ecosystem using the 18 principles and you decide an ecosystem using the 18 principles, it works. Because when I did the 12 principles, I tried to make ecosystems that did not work. Right now, I have more than uh, 400 ecosystems which I use for training, and they are made using the 18 principles, and they can demonstrate how the 18 uh, principles work so i went back to the 18 principles and that is what i teach because that is what works for me. next 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 please i think this one should be the final slide so we have the five ethics above and then we have the three energy uh, principles 
then we have the uh, four functional design principles and then we have the five principles from nature and then we have the seven attitudinal principles so in uh, our 400 indigenous ecosystems we have used all these principles and you can demonstrate and use to teach people how they can be able to use them to assess design and create new ecosystems and all these ecosystems they require almost zero human effort about 10 percent which is totally different to conventional agriculture systems which use about uh, uh, 90 percent of human labor and then they are destructive to the underground uh, uh, water the soil the living things the air yeah and also the other other, other different types of uh, uh, plants so our systems are, are totally eco-friendly and uh, we focus mainly on um, restoring the indigenous ecosystems for food security and also mitigate climate change. If you walk to any of our ecosystem, you will be appreciate the diversity of temperatures from outside the gate and inside the system. They keep on growing, they, as they grow and they keep on maturing, they require less and less human attention. I think with that, I can say thank you very much for listening and uh, I'm sorry for being very fast because of time. But I believe that uh, I've shared the slides, everybody can be able to access and refer. But I also have more detailed slides and my upcoming training is coming in next month in July. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Maurice. This went uh, very well today. I think I'd like to open the floor now, of course, to anybody that would like to ask Maurice additional questions. Let me first finish this. So you wanted to say something, Andrew? You're muted again. I'm having echo problems. I'm gonna end the slide, just a moment. Oh, no, I can't share, just a moment. I'll stop. I see Heinrich has his, name, has his hand up. Just a moment, please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Heinrich, you, you have a question.